based in Nairobi, Kenya with branches around the country and beyond. He also leads Gospel Light Ministries, a gospel agency involved in leadership training, children feeding and educational programs in the slums and conducting outreaches to schools, colleges and universities. Gospel Light College is another useful tool founded by Apostle David to equip believers for kingdom work. Since its inception, this apostolic Bible school has impacted hundreds of believers and commissioned them into their niches in the ministry. David is a team leader of the Alliance of Apostolic Churches and Ministries ACCM, an umbrella body for the apostolic churches in Kenya. David is also the founder and leader of Elevate TV, a Kenyan-based television that endeavors to advance the kingdom lifestyle by shaping mindsets and elevate the truth to the nations. He travels internationally into Africa, Europe, America, Asia, Australia and Middle East teaching and preaching the gospel. Amen. Let's give Jesus a good hand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. What a joy to be here tonight. With a, I see everybody doing like this. And now I see why. So please turn that light to the people. Wow. Thank you so much, Bishop Jackson, and your wife. It's an honor to see you again and to spend this couple of days together. Thank you for the grace of God in your life. We acknowledge the anointing, the wisdom, the grace. Uh, I've known your pastor for many years and the servant of God over this ministry since the 80s, from a distance and now right in your house. The Lord bless you. Acknowledge Bishop Mark Karaoke. What a man of God. You guys have no idea, like he said, on how to receive fathers. And, but we shall cross that river very soon before Jesus comes. But, sir, we acknowledge the grace of God in your life. It's a blessing for me to be with you this couple of days. And I know if we preach together here, we shall preach together on the other side. By the grace of God. Thank you so much. I acknowledge all the leaders in the house and the men of God from Atlanta. I only came there by revelation. God bless you. Oh, Stephron, God bless you, sir. Amen. Tell your neighbor, even you shall be acknowledged as soon as they know your name. <laughs> wow. Just stretch your hand as we pray a short prayer. Father, we lift our hand before you. We ask you to minister to us by your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done right here as it is in heaven. Lord Jesus, minister to us by your word and may this conference be a blessing not only to us, but also to the hearers here and online to the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Clap your hands and celebrate Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. All right, this guy is a little bit far. God bless you. This man, I wish he was near, but now that he was raptured and we are still here. Hey. You know that machine is more expensive than a pro box. So we thank God, we thank God. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Amen. Wow. Just play something. You may be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank God for the conference uh, this year. I bring you greetings from uh, my wife, uh, Asunta. She loves you and our children. The Lord bless you. Would you want to receive greetings from my wife? All right. Also receive special greetings from uh, an arsonist, uh, Apostle Patrick Moravi. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm gonna ask us to uh, read scripture and just begin the engine. And because time is not a lot, one hour is too short, but we're gonna summarize a couple of things because there's gonna be a few hour hours later before Sunday evening, uh, the Lord allowing glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, are you going to throw scriptures on the walls? You know, the Bible left our hands and went to the screens. Deuteronomy 1 verse 6, 
Let's read the theme verse for the sake of uh, protocols. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, I'll read in the NIV. I was looking for my Bible, the New King James and Old King James has nothing to do with breaking camp. So when I checked the NIV, I found that's where uh, the phrase is. The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Somebody say this mountain. Break camp and advance where? Into the hill country of the Amorites. To all the neighboring peoples in the Araba, in the mountains, in the western foothills, the Negev, along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon. Oh my God. As far as the great river, the Euphrates. Amen. Wow. The land has been described as far as God expects us to go. But if we're going to go there, we have to do something about where we are. We have to break camp, the Bible says. We have to disrupt the Kaya Zaga. Hey. We have to disrupt the current atmosphere. We have to move. We have to make changes. I liked the song on Suddenlies that I had these guys sing. That suddenly made it move from the song, made it land in your atmosphere, in your life. Suddenly. I don't know whether you are ready for disruptions, translocations, transportations, being conveyed, being moved from one dimension to another dimension. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Faith still comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So as I speak the word, may your faith begin to rise. Some of you probably are beaten down by circumstances, situations, and Mr. Corona, and so forth. Ask your neighbor, was your amen eaten by Corona? But faith will raise you up and bring you to a place you can believe God again for the supernatural to take place. <clears throat> Amen. Being the first night, because we may not make our tacos and lay hands on you and feed and slap you a little bit, you know, there are many charismatic stuff we can do. If I do that, we may be arrested. So the only thing we're going to believe do you have capacity to receive the word until the word produces the miracle you need and you haven't left your chair? Ask your neighbor, can you receive from where you are? Or you need to be assisted to be carried in front. Zaya, if you're going to be carried in front, it's okay. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. Allow my voice is as jet lag. Hey. To behold you as my king. For your glory, for your glory. This year 2022. I will do anything just to see you, just to see you, to behold you, to behold you as my king. Want to be where you are. Yes. Going to be where you are. I want to be Wanna be where you are, Lord Jesus? I want to be right here. I'm gonna be where you are. Wanna be, wanna be where you are, Jesus? I gotta be where you are.
for your glory, for your glory. I will do anything. Just to see, just to see you, to behold you as my King. Listen, the nation of Israel in this Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse uh, 6, 7, in fact the whole of this chapter, if you look at verse 1, these are the words which Moses spoke to the children of Israel on the side of the wilderness in the plain against the Red Sea. Israel had come to the borderline just to cross Jordan, enter the land of the promise. This Deuteronomy chapter 1 uh, is showing 40 years of wilderness were over. They were just about to get into the promised land. And Moses needed to speak to the people. They are the verge of breakthrough and entering in. And the Bible says, or shall I say two major things quickly. One is that where the nation of Israel had come uh, at this time, it was out of an accumulation. 40 years of accumulation of words from Moses. That's what had brought them there. An accumulation of works of God. That's what had brought them there. And at the same time, there was the ministry of Moses that brought them through the wilderness with so much delay, so much confusion. Many of the people died in the wilderness. They didn't make it at this point. But there was a group of people that were still alive with Moses. And they were here at the verge of crossing over to the land of the promise. A few years ago, you are ripe for story number one. Tell your neighbor you are ripe for story number one. A few years ago, I was in a meeting somewhere in Florida and I got a little book by a, a, a certain author Next time, uyu mutu muambia, e light, e umetupea preacher, our pair ta nyinyi. Because we need to see you so that you can receive. Sawa. Otherwise, nitakuja shini. Lakini kija shini, kamera yenu itapotea. So, this book was so funny. They say you buy books because of titles. You know what the title of the book? And you know that book got lost in the hands of some brethren. So whoever has my book should return it. This was the title of the book. The Promised Land Without a People. The Promised Land Without a People. Here they are at the plain. They need to go over. But many of them never made it. Though they had a great man called Moses. They died in the wilderness. Wow. And listen to me. The nation of Israel had reached at this point and God is speaking these words and telling them, you guys go to break camp and advance. Your colleagues, your family members, your people, some of them never made it to where you are. But you are the generation that is going to go yonder. You are the generation that is going to cross over. Corona didn't help. Many people never made it. But we have survived COVID. And we are here. God has a plan. We got to step into the next experience with God to the next place. I usually shout a little bit. I'm trying to be, you know, to use my manners because we are in Dallas. Testing waters, one, two. <laughs> How many of you are glad to be on this side of COVID? Post-COVID church. Wherever God wanted you to enter into, you must enter in this season. But look, let's appreciate, we are here because of the previous season. 
and the previous generation. Israel is at this place because of the words of Moses, the works of Moses, and the ministry of Moses. The church is here because of the fathers. The church is here because of the labors of those who went before us. Are you listening to me? I'm just commenting on breaking camp and advance because it is wisdom to just do a little bit of digging into the theme of the conference before we begin to take another turn because we will. Hallelujah. This generation and church will need to appreciate what made the previous generation emerge into a great force. Moses emerged as a great force. This generation that was born in the wilderness must appreciate that we are here because of the labors of the previous generation. Oh, these men and women who are there in the past. On a television uh, you know, station, we have a program called Tracing Mantles. We talk to those fathers that are over 80 years and 75. When we go back now, we'll talk to the other fathers. So we'll be talking to you, sir. You know, listening to what happened in their time because these children have no idea. We are here. Because of the labors of our fathers. Glory to God. But the Lord is still saying, I did wonders with the previous generation. And we are glad we are here. But this generation must cross over, must advance and go a little bit farther than before. Are you listening to me? And what made that previous generation become such a great force? There was something they appreciated. Let me mention four things that were critical in their generation so that we can check and see whether what is going on right now is helping us to move forward or are we breaking down and are likely to get lost in the wilderness like the children of Israel did. This is what happened to the previous generation. They understood the call of God on their lives. Number one, Moses was called by God. Aligned, he was aligned with the purposes of God. You remember Moses, how he was born as a little boy. Let me try to move a little bit fast because we have now already taken 25 miles. Are you ready for me preaching fast and you receiving quickly? May you have a speed understanding. Zaya, Zaya, Zaya. So Moses appreciated, look, they appreciated the call of God on Moses, the way he was born, raised in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house. You remember he was to be, you know, killed, but God preserved him so that later a woman, daughter of Pharaoh, took him up, raised him up. The special hand of God was upon Moses because of destiny. He couldn't die in the river Nile. You and I didn't die in the previous attack. Why? Because God has a plan for what is coming ahead of us. Let's appreciate that this man had a mighty call. If you listen to Bishop Mark and Bishop Jackson, you will hear what happened. The encounters they had with God. Something that shifted their life completely. Glory to God. I remember in A-levels, in a school not mentioned for security reasons, uh, we had a great move of God. I was uh, uh, the, the main uh, footballer of the, of the school. I was, uh, have you ever heard of Juman and Peter? You know, uh, uh, I was a professional footballer. Uh, uh, I used to be paid 20 bob. You know, that's a, almost a, a third of a dollar, you know, every Sunday because I would be picked from high school play for local clubs, and then they bring me back as a student in Form 3 and Form 4. Uh, true story. True story. I used to score in every match. Even now I dream scoring. I, I believe you should not lose even in a dream. Even when you are dreaming, don't be a loser. Don't dream that uh, a hole has opened, you have entered, you have disappeared, you don't know where you are. No, no, no. Sleep again. Wake up. Seal the hole and cover it up and stand on it and praise Jesus. That's how to Zagaye. That we did a power.
powerful gospel meeting the last years of A levels. And the man of God, we invited Dean come. He sent somebody else who preached 25 minutes about the blood of Jesus. Gave it to our CEO patron, Titus Masika. Tall man with a great voice. He made an altar call. Hundreds of students came forward to be born again. I was there, seated there as a chairman. So standing, looking in front, the, the head of a tall man, you know, and hundreds of young people giving their life to Christ. And I'm standing there in A-levels, waiting to go to the university and have a future and a hope. Then the voice of God spoke to me. He said, this is what I want you to be doing in life. I tell you what, and this is still what I'm doing right now in life. The call of God changes people's lives. Ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? Do you know the call of God in your life? That's what changed the generation before. You, you may have been called to America. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the call of God that will identify who you are and shift your DNA, connect you with the heaven, pour the spirit upon your life, make you a special tool in the hands of God. Change your future and change your life. That's what happened to Moses. The second thing that we identify is that this man, they made blunders. Moses, for instance, killed a man in trying to save Israel from Egypt. The previous generation that has brought us at the verge of Jordan to a place where we can cross over. We acknowledge they made blunders. They made mistakes. They were weak. There were other vessels. But they carried heavenly treasure. Even you, you are being disrupted by your weaknesses, by your challenges, by your failures. But God likes to use failures that he can show forth his glory. In case you are messed up, God will clean you up this weekend. In case you are still held by things you didn't achieve, God is still a God of another chance. God is able to restore you and place you in a place. Though Moses killed a man, ran away to Midian. Oh my God, God connected to a priest. You know, you know that father-in-law guy? He got connected to that man, married over there, stayed there for 40 years, thinking he is hiding. His blunders could not stop God from using him and bringing him back online. We are where we are because of what our fathers have experienced. Whether failures or successes, God was still with them. And we are here today. These 19 years I've heard, you guys have gone through challenges and difficulties. But even then, you are still here by the grace of God. And still God has a chance for this church and ministry to move forward. Listen, and after that, Moses had an encounter of the burning bush. He saw supernatural things that changed his perspective, changed his life. I don't know the last time you saw something supernatural. The last time you had an encounter with God. I don't know the last time you knew something special has happened. Can I declare to you, just in case you have been experiencing ordinary things, normal things, mere things, what we used to call in accounts, miscellaneous things. Sundry expenses. No more kawaii things. I declare me something supernatural begin to happen in your life. This week, we declare this is an open heaven. Oh yeah, your eyes will see beyond your naked eyes. Your spirit will sense heaven is on your side. May there be a divine encounter for somebody. May you see the bush burning, yet it is not being consumed. There is something greater than money. There is something greater than achievement. There is something greater. When you have an encounter with God, it will change you. We don't preach because we failed. We don't share the gospel because we failed. It is an encounter we had with Jesus. It is something special from above that took place. That's why Israel is where they are. I declare to you in this church, you too shall be visited by the power of God. May you have your own encounter. May you have your own encounter with God. Oh, we are here because of prophetic words in the past and instructions. Hallelujah. There are prophetic words in the past. There are things that were preached to us 
There are things that are declared to us. Listen, there was also demonstration of power. Number five, there has been powerful things that have brought Israel and has brought the church today to where we are. Even then, ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge that secondly, Israel had such great leadership, but they still got stuck in the wilderness and many of them died in the wilderness. I pray that though we are exposed to such great graces, you will not die in this wilderness. You will cross over. You will go to your destiny. You will go farther. You will go deeper. You will take stronger steps of faith. You will believe God than ever before. Young man, your father has a great story. You must create your own story with God. Young lady, your mother is such a prayer warrior. May something happen to you. You create your own space and you become a warrior for God. You too shall be a man of God. You too shall be a woman of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, they had great leadership, but they got stuck in the wilderness. Listen to this. If you look at this Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 26, going down to verse 30, you'll be surprised to hear some of the things that happened until these guys could make it. Look at verse 26. Uh, the Bible says, but you are unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Verse 27, you grappled in the NIV in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Look, these guys couldn't believe. They had so much unbelief. Oh my God. Look at verse 29. Then I say to you, do not be terrified. No, do not be afraid of them. You see, they are fearful. They are so scared. Look at verse 32. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God. Look, they didn't have faith. These guys, verse 34, when the Lord heard what, he, what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore. This is what he said, verse 35. No one from this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give to your ancestors except Caleb son of Jephunel, oh my God. And because he followed the Lord whole, wholeheartedly, because of you, the Lord became angry, verse 37, and said, you shall not enter, either, verse 38, but your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it. Encourage him, because he will lead Israel to inherit it. I'm just trying to summarize very quickly that there are four things that made these guys not to enter the land of the promise. Number one, unbelief. Somebody shout unbelief. Number two, rebellion against God's word. These guys rebelled against God, though he had given them, given them such great leadership through Moses. Number three, murmurings. They murmured and complained. Number four, fear. Fear kept them from moving forward. These are the limitations. Unbelief. How do we confront unbelief? It's by shifting our mentality, bringing a biblical worldview. Shall I say doctrine? The word that can challenge our thinking. Glory to God. How do we bring obedience, faith, and trust in God, other than rebelling against God's word. Again, we're going to teach the people and show them this is a way. Follow into that way. Glory to God. How are we going to stop people from murmuring and being so fearful until God swore and said, you shall not enter the land. These limitations are still there in the 21st century church and people. But I declare tonight in the name of Jesus, God has always wanted his church to move forward. Somebody say, God wants me to move forward. Hallelujah. We must go beyond the first experiences we had and move on to maturity. Glory to God. Listen to me. Let me uh, teach for five minutes. The man of God said, I teach. Listen, there are dimensions, examples, patterns in the word of God that shows us that any people, anywhere, got always to believe God and step into a new level. Break from the past and break from what limits them and believe 
to enter into a new sphere. There are many, many pictures and patterns and symbols. Listen to this. For instance, the, there is a concept of threes in the Bible that helps us to see this. For instance, Jesus has three names. He is Jesus. He is Christ. Number three, he is what? Lord. Mm. Oh, Jesus means God is Savior. And many churches and many people are just stuck in Savior salvation. Jesus. The name was the same name that was Joshua. Joshua was Hoshea that became Joshua, that became Jesus. God is Savior. Matthew 1 21. And she shall bear a son and shall call his name what? Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. So we thank God for Jesus. But do you know he is Christ? Messiah. The sent one. The anointed one. Oh church. Some churches have too much anointing. They are selling some. You have an oversupply. Oh, Jesus. Ask anybody, do you have a bottle of anointing all in your house? Uh, if you have them in your house, we need to ask you, are you an elder? Because only elders are allowed to have oils, bottles of oils in their house. They can anoint the sick. So we need a service called bottles of oil returning service. So that we only distribute to elders. <laughs> okay. You'll get it tomorrow. So, he is savior. And some people have, in the mainland churches, they have refused to move to Christ, the anointed one. And transact with the Messiah, the sent one. But do you know, Lord, master, owner. The one who is in charge of the economy of the earth. The spirit of dominion. Lord. That's where we are moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Psalms 22 verse 1. You find Jesus on the cross. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Is David speaking in the spirit. We see Jesus on the cross in Psalm 22. In 23, he is the Lord, my shepherd, my pastor, the one who guides me, who comforts me, who takes care of me, as it were, and I praise the Lord, I have a relationship with him. Do you know Psalms 24, verse 1? Oh my God, he's the one having dominion. He's taking cities, my God. So we must move from the cross, enter into relationship with the shepherd, and then enter in Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's. Those three movements, we must break camp, and move on with Christ. From Jesus to Lord. Oh my God. The church got to go beyond anointing. To Lordship. That's another message we shall preach before 2030. But for now just take it. Israel in Deuteronomy 16 for instance. Needed every year to celebrate three feasts. Somebody say three feasts. Let me summarize that quickly in one minute. Three feasts, three times in the year, all males, Deuteronomy 16, 16, all males were to appear before the Lord in a place that he will choose at the feast of unleavened bread. Number two, at the feast of weeks. Number three, at the feast of booths. These are three feasts. The first feast is basically the feast of unleavened bread, which is the feast of Passover, Passover is an experience where we appreciate that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood. We remember Easter, Passover. Oh, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Do you remember? You don't remember, you're not there. But have you read it? Oh, from Passover, we have to move on. Somebody say we have to move on. To another feast, we call Feast of Weeks, which is a fixed Feast of Harvest, which is a feast of Pentecost. Uh, after you encounter the cross, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and encounter the Holy Ghost and enjoy the power of the Spirit and have a relationship with Him. 
Ask your neighbor, why are you not saying amen? Will you say amen on Sunday or will you say amen by faith on Friday? Uh, we need to move from Feast of Weeks to Feast of Booths or Tabernacles or in gathering of the harvest. After we receive the Holy Spirit and we are walking with him, now we are sent into the world and begin to gather the harvest and begin to follow a kingdom agenda. Oh my God. Hey, look, we were not meant just to enjoy ourselves that we are Pentecostals. We have the Holy Spirit and fire. That's a petrol station. You don't build and stay at the gas station. You drive at the gas station Fire up in the conference of breaking limits. Get back your tongues. Some of your tongues are old. Saga, 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 saga. Sai, siri, sai, siri, sai, ka. Wait, wait. You need to move deeper to another encounter with the Holy Ghost so that we can fight the battles of God as we gather the harvest in these last days. How many of you are ready to move with God in this season? In 2020, 30th of April, in the middle of Corona, the Lord gave me an encounter the whole night. And he spoke to me and said, Bishop, there is a global awakening coming after COVID. And the Lord showed me so many things that were going to come. Let me tell you, those things have begun to happen. In our nation, we have an awakening. You call a little meeting, you have extra people you are not expecting. Hunger has already hit the ground. People are getting saved like crazy. One bishop was telling me, people are just passing through the church. Sunday morning, 30 people walked into the church. And they said, we want to get saved. Can you pray for us, bishop? You yeah, have to stop the songs and the program to first of all pray for that people. That means disrupting discipleship class. Hey disrupting order, my God. Another man was passing through, you know, Bishop Alan's uh, church the other day. And as he was driving on that parkless area somewhere in Kenya, where you shall go before Jesus returns, you know, he felt, I can't pass. He drove into the church in the middle of the week. He said, is there anybody here who can pray for me to get saved? Something has begun to happen. Limits are broken. People are turning to Jesus. But are you ready to be involved in gathering the harvest, activating your gifts, repositioning yourself, becoming a tool in the hands of God, becoming a worker? Oh my God, are you ready to be involved in what Jesus is doing? Or you are busy building yourself and placing food on the table? What a minute agenda. Just food on the table. We have a kingdom agenda. How many of you believe we have a kingdom agenda? Even the tabernacle had three compartments. Outer court, middle court, innermost court. You cannot remain at the outer court. You got to come in. You got to go right in. The curtain was broken. Ay, 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 ay. If I was preaching in Kenya, I would say the curtain was broken from top, bottom. And then we could enter bottom up. Okay, I'm just shika. You will shika, but you'll get it later. You'll get it later. Somebody say in a most court. Wow. We must advance. Somebody say I must advance. So many threes. Even healing. We have what we call divine healing. Oh. I pray that this weekend, if you are sick, you'll be healed permanently. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. See what is it? Finish the song. It shall be permanent. Hey. You know, I, you know why I like preaching, walking? I was preaching in a city called George. In South Africa, as I was walking, a pastor's wife was having a, a liver problem and she was going through those clinics every week. And as I was passing, she got healed. Just passing. Just passing. That was Sunday evening. 
So on Wednesday in the service, she was testifying. And she said, when the man of God was passing, I felt something in my body. I had a clinic on Monday. And the doctor is asking me, what happened to your liver? You, you are okay. She said, I was just in a Jesus meeting. I wish I can come down and just walk. Kayazoga. But instead of walking, why don't you receive whatever you are? Divine healing. But do you know we can move from divine healing and move a little bit deeper to divine health? Where well, you don't need a miracle. <laughs> you have the miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. He is inside of me. I enjoy divine life. May somebody enjoy divine life. Move from divine healing to divine health. And then thirdly move to divine life. Oh my God. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life. The soy life. The God kind of life is inside of me. Glory to God. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Enjoy divine life. May you have longevity of life. May you live forever. May you live so, so many years without disease. It's possible. I like testimonies. I like testimonies. My own father is still alive. Praise God. He's 95 years old. So he was having strange headache. So all the children gathered. We said MRI. Check the man. They checked everything twice. This, the doctor said the guy has no sickness. He was just missing his children. I mean, 95, no need for Panadol. I said, the man is enjoying divine life. It's possible. You know, he has four daughters and seven sons. All the seven sons are pastors. One man, one mother. And this is one of them. The man is enjoying divine life. I declare may you leave. If you are hearing my words. If you are hearing what. I'm not just giving you a story. I declare somebody will not die. We postpone that death. In the mighty name of Jesus. You shall move on with life. Some of you are just. Let me give you another example. You are just experiencing 30 fold. You need to move to 60 fold. How about a hundred fold? <laughs> One little song you sing, made it begin to bear fruit from that effort to sixth effort. You know, I appreciate sound. Every church should sing all the songs they want, but every church should also have their own songs. The same Holy Spirit who made them to write those songs he is living inside of you. So sound people like Billy, uh, in the next seven days, may you have a Holy Ghost encounter. Hear sound. Put words. If you don't have sound, the message of the preacher is your next song. And then the song will move from 34 to 64 to 100 fold. It shall be hard in America. Beyond America. Oh, in the days we're living with social media, one song, one conference will be heard all the way in Marigwene. You have no idea where that is? Somewhere in Africa. Jesus. We must move forward. How many of you are ready to move forward? Exodus 14, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, Read this with me, Exodus 14, verse 15. Why do you, I'm looking for it. Why are you crying out to me? Read it in New King James Version. We finished with the NIV. If it's NIV after 1984, forget about it. It's been hacked. It's been hacked. We are encouraging the church people to have 
physical original Bibles. Because in the next 10 years, they are buying off the Bible printing companies so they can hack the digital thing later. So we, we, everyone should buy several physical Bibles, keep them in your house. Tell your neighbor that's an action point after this weekend. So bring the bookshop at the foyer, this conference, buy a Bible for yourself. Don't be ashamed to carry your Bible. Allow us who are traveling to travel light. But those of you who are right here on ground zero, tomorrow you should come with a physical Bible. Otajua ujui. Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. I come here to say it is time for this church to move forward. Glory to God. We must move forward. We must move forward. I have seven minutes of a preacher. But let me say this in those seven minutes. We have to move forward. Hallelujah. Go to Acts 18. And look at verse 24. There's a man called Apollos. I like him. And the Bible says of this man, you, Mutotua Pastor, bring the verses quickly. Pastor's kid, bring the verses quickly. Anybody who does this work is a pastor's children. Even if you are called another name from today, you are pastor's child. Apollos came to preach in Ephesus. All right? Verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. Apollos, a Jew, born of Alexander, eloquent man, mighty in scriptures. He came to Ephesus, the way we have come to Dallas. Let's see the conference, the con convention, verse 20. We'll read up to verse 27 or 28. Quickly, verse 25. Dudu, Bonyesha Ingia, the next verse. How, what method are you using? This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. Somebody say, I like Apollos. Look at his qualities. Mighty in scripture, father and his spirit. Look, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Oh, there was a problem. He only knew the baptism of John. And then, the guy began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Before I knew English, I thought synagogue is where sinners walk each other. <laughs> when Aquila and Priscilla, they heard him. Listen to this. The man is preaching in Dallas, in a city, in a cinema hall, like here. And there is a couple who are working with the poor. They are seated behind there, and they are listening to this new arrival guy, eloquent, such a nice speech. You know, the guy is mighty in scripture. He, he is a good speaker. Some of us are just trying to make noise. The guy could speak. Wait, wait, keep the scripture there. Watch out, Mimi. Put the scripture there. But Aquila Priscilla, when they heard him that night, they said, man of God, stay, instead of staying in the hotel, why don't you stay in our house? You know, and uh, Apollos felt, yeah, God is moving. We came to the city. The city is opening up. People are becoming partners with us. It's amazing. Come and stay in the house. He came, wait, wait. Go back to the verse. Go back to the verse. Yeah. They took him aside, and they had coffee for him, take a shower, eat some chicken legs, and how many of you know if you are fed in the house, taken care of? Everything is good. Are you ready to sleep, man of God? Coffee, tea, or chocolate? Black chocolate. And then Aquila Priscilla opened their mouth and said, Man of God, welcome to our city. You little preached well. But there was a problem. You are talking about John the Baptist. Are you not aware? We moved forward into Christ. Hey. They explained to him the way of God. Goja, Mutotrapas, go back. The way of God more accurately. Somebody say, the way of God. Shout more accurately. Ah. Initially, he taught the word. But now here, there's another level of accuracy. God wanted 
post Corona Church to enter into a new level of more accuracy. There's, listen, revelation of God's word is progressive. God is forever revealing himself to his people through scripture. The same scripture we saw in the 80s, when we look at it today, we have a richer, deeper understanding of the same word. The Holy Spirit is moving us forward into maturity. I declare the church, don't get stuck on the old. Don't get stuck on religious activities. Don't just get stuck on the old order. There is something new God is doing. There is another level of accuracy we must enter into. Look at what happened in the next verse. And when they desired to cross over to Achaia, to move from Ephesus to another city, the brethren wrote letters exhorting uh, the disciples to receive any money. Uh, he arrived, he greatly helped those who believed through grace. He moved from the understanding of John the Baptist now to understand the grace of God and what Jesus did on the cross. The church will move forward if we migrate in our understanding of the doctrine of Christ. Most individuals, most families, most churches are stuck in doctrine. But if we can see the accurate doctrine of Christ, we'll be able to move the engine of the body of Christ. This conference is a moment for us to hear more and go deeper in understanding in the mighty name of Jesus and make a movement. Even as Apollos had gotten the little group of believers in Ephesus gets stuck. Look at the next verse, which is chapter 19, verse 1. Yeah, go to 19, verse 1. It happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, finding some disciples. Okay, he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believe? They said, hey, we have not so much heard there was, whether there was a Holy Spirit. So he has a question. So in what baptism were you baptized? He said into John's baptism. Who was a preacher in the last convention? Apollos. What was his message? John the Baptist. What did he do? Baptize them into John. Wow. Paul has come in with another dimension and he is saying, look, uh, verse 4, John indeed baptized you, you know, the baptism of repentance saying to the people, that they should believe on him who should come after him. That is Christ Jesus. What happened after that? The Bible says, when they heard this, they are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They migrated to a more accurate position. They move forward. They have an understanding of scripture. And they are ready to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Watch out, John. Look at the next verse. He had laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And they spoke with the tongues and prophesied. He prophesied. They enter into another dimension. Are you aware that the Holy Spirit would want to come upon our lives in a very special way until the Holy Spirit will feel us, will get into him, him in us, will come to a new level until we can speak by inspiration, we can see by the Spirit, we can enter into a prophetic dimension. Our lives can know what God is about to do through the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? I'm going to stop at that for now. We're going to pick this a little later. But I want to say to you, the time the church is going to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, that's a moment our lives will open up in the mighty name of Jesus to another dimension. We will migrate from Apollo's ministry to Paul's ministry. We'll migrate from John the Baptist to Christ. I declare may your life have a movement. May the Lord open a way for you. Remove any limitation so that you can step into a more accurate position as an individual, as a family, and corporately as a church. May there be a move of the Holy Ghost. Zaraga Zagaya. Would you want to stand up on your feet and listen to me while you're standing for two, three minutes and my time is over? It's nine o'clock. I preach for 50 minutes. I've really tried. Jesus. Somebody say 50 minutes. We're going to use those five minutes of prayer. 
and a press in the spirit. Can I have one or two of you guys who are singing here? Holy, holy are you, Lord? Are you, Lord God? Oh, mighty, what is the land? What is the land? 